This week on CrossFeed. When Jesus rose from the dead, did he copy someone else? Did Jesus copy Buddha? Hey, you're doing an exorcism. Is that legal? How Mormon are fundamentalist Mormons? And can you worship at a virtual altar? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. Hey, and I'm Pastor Jim Butler out in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, and it's good to be back with you, everybody, after a, a couple of weeks. Um, I was gone at a camp last week where I was... Are you ready, are you ready for my official title? Camp Chief. <laughs> that was my official title. So I, you know, I kept picturing myself with this, you know, headrest going down, you know. <laughs> um, as you probably noticed, we're uh, running a little bit differently this week. Uh, Jim's big for a change, and I'm little. And uh, we also don't have the backgrounds this time. I just got a new computer. Uh, it's not new, it's used, but it's new to me. And so that means that um, that I'm going to start doing the recordings. We used to have Jim do the recordings, then he'd send them to me and I'd edit them. And so what this means is we should be able to get episodes out to you sooner because otherwise we record on Thursday night. You get it like Monday, Sunday, something like that. I should be able to get them to you like Friday, Saturday, something like that, usually. And, you know, it just all depends. Of course, this time we're recording on Sunday, so that kind of throws that whole thing. Um, so we're we're still kind of working out some of the technical details of having Jim uh, be the big one and specifically with the backgrounds and stuff. And uh, it's just going to take us a little while, and we decided we could either just not do it at all or uh, we could just do it uh, sort of, uh, what's the word, um, natural. <laughs> <laughs> Let's really not go there. <laughs> um, oh, that is nasty. Yeah, I don't think they really want us to do it all natural. <laughs> anyway, um. You can email Jim at podcast at crossfeednews.com. <laughs> no, no, let's not do that at all. Um, let's just leave it to go there, but, uh, um, it's really is good to be back with you all, though, and, uh, just had a, had a great time, and, uh, and by the way, if you haven't seen The Dark Knight, go see it. I want to go see it today. Awesome movie. Dale's terribly jealous. Yep. But they don't believe in movie theaters tonight. <laughs> <laughs> too busy cleaning. Still cleaning up floodness. Hello, I, so what have you been doing while I was out, out camping? Um, I took my kids to camp today, speaking of camp, and we drove through downtown Cedar Rapids because um, the GPS led us kind of strangely. And we drove right down through where all that flooding had been. And mm. it's, I mean, water's back down to normal level. But like, there's this bridge where there was a train. They they actually left the train on the bridge, hoping that the cars would weight it down to keep it from floating away. But it just, I mean, the bridge is just destroyed. You just see this, you know, if you've ever seen a train bridge uh, that goes over a river. I mean, it's just, it's this metal or like steel bridge that's just in shambles and you drive past these houses and there's just these piles of rubble in front of every house. So it's just, it's going to take a long time before that's cleaned up. I am haunted by waters. So, well, it is, uh, <laughs> by that last episode, you know, sorry about last week and all, um, but you know, our our last episode was what I would call feature length. It was ninety minutes, <laughs> so it was like crossfeed the movie. Um, so we're gonna keep it a little shorter tonight because we're getting started really late. So uh, let's jump in. It's, it's almost past my bedtime here, so uh, I don't know where. Well, let's begin with um uh, uh, uh um yeah. Maybe Dale and I are your virtual pastors here. Oh, there you go. How fitting, huh? This was by Charles Anyango Abo uh, in Kenya Today. 
And uh, he, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a strange thing. He, I, he, he argues that the, 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 what may kill off the church is the Internet because the, apparently the Bible is just so far, we're just so far behind the times in churches. Well, he starts off talking about, like, um, uh, gay bishops and all that kind of stuff in the Anglican church, and he's saying his argument is, you know, you're worried about these things when you should really be worried about the fact that people would rather sit and watch YouTube than go listen to a pastor. And while that's true, there's always been forms of entertainment that people would rather go see instead of the pastor. So I'm not sure about that argument. Well, I mean, Christianity has always been a religion of the remnant. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we've always been the minority here. Um, that's just always, that's just part of the Christian faith. Um, but, you know, I mean, here I was last week dealing with these, these uh, millennials, um, you know, <laughs> All of them born, you know, freshmen through senior in high school, so they're all the same age as my, my own kids. Uh, yet I managed to hold their attention for an hour each day, and afterwards they got into the, you know, discussion. It's supposed to be a half hour small group, and they were, you know, in there for 45 minutes and an hour discussing how this applied to their lives, how their faith applied to their lives. Uh, and they're part of the YouTube generation. Yep. Uh, much more so than I am. So, yeah, you can argue that all this is, is you know, uh, uh, impacts, but, but it always has. You know, the church is a system and it's impacted by the systems around it. But the key thing is to ask ourselves, how can we, um, you know, approach that and deal with it rather than get scared by it? At the same time, there is something, you know, quite often the church, especially when it comes to uh, technology, tends to run a little bit behind um and you know and and that's something that i think we as a church need to recognize you know i mean just as an example you've got like facebook and you know myspace and all that kind of stuff and there are some uh religious social networks in that right but they were kind of late in coming and now you've got stuff like Twitter and and that where you're taking the Internet and taking it with you. You've got it on your phone. You know, uh, the iPhone update just came out last week and or two weeks ago, whatever it is now. Um, and and that was big news. And and, you know, people are, are taking the web with them and interacting in their lives. It's not just sitting at your computer with a web browser and. The question that's really been plaguing me over the past week or so is how can we take that, that idea of, of using something like the internet and making it so that people can take this along with them so that, you know, whether it be, uh, being able to say, for instance, with Twitter, all right, Hey, I'm in this situation, all of my, uh, you know, my, my friends out there, uh, you know, what should I do here? Or, um, you know, somebody just asked me this question, how do I answer it? Cause I'm stumped. And, um, you know, I'm, and so to, to use those tools and I think, you know, part of it is to use the tools that we have. Um, but also I think that, that we, as a, as a Christian church need to, uh, develop new tools that will help with that. You know, and maybe it's a, a a sort of Christian Wikipedia, and I'm not talking about um, like Conservapedia, which is kind of an embarrassing thing. Um, but I'm thinking more of like a, a, a apologetics wiki um, and, and things like that, where if you need to get information and you need to get it fast, um, ways to access that, and not just when you're sitting at home on your computer. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it, it, it's interesting because, you know, there was a time when the, the church was uh, into uh, the technology. Uh, radio, churches adapted to very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, television, churches adapted to very quickly. But um, 
you know, last time I was telling Dale last week at this, this camp, I used PowerPoint. And, you know, one of the guys said this is the first time a pastor had ever used PowerPoint up there. And I was like, what? I mean, I figured the kids probably be bored stiff by it because they probably see it all the time. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I mean, it just dawned on you know, you know, you know, we just still tend to, to, to stand up there and speak. Um, yeah. Uh, my church doesn't have a screen. I almost wish we did because one thing that I learned about PowerPoint is you can put the point you want to make up there. And I, I was able really to speak without notes for an hour because all the notes I would want are up there on the screen. Mm-hmm. And see, I think we need to move beyond PowerPoint. I think that, that, you know, PowerPoint is based on a slideshow presentation, right? How many of you like watching slideshows, you know? I mean, it's like what I did on my summer vacation. <laughs> like, uh, okay, great. You know, this is the age of video, and, uh, you know, I think that there's something else that, that we need to take that, sort of move away from that slideshow thing and, and into uh, video. Now, you got to be careful. I'm, I'm not suggesting that, uh, you know... There's a fine line that we walk there uh, between content and entertainment, and the con- the enter- the um, the tool can never take the stage and become the focus instead of the actual content, the message, because we're all about the message, and so we have to be very careful. Whereas the world is all about entertainment and can just throw anything out there. And not really have to worry about the message. You know, we're all about the message. And so we have to be very careful with the way we use it. And it's very easy. And I've seen a lot of churches that, um, that try to take this technology and they, they jump in without really thinking about it. And it, well, Marshall McLuhan said that the medium is the message. And, you know, you can let the technology run away from you. Mm-hmm. At the other hand, on the other hand, there is no no nothing wrong with making the content entertaining. Yeah, you know, it can be. I've read sermons that were doctrinally very good, but were also very dull. I mean, there was nothing there to liven them up. There were no stories to grab your attention. There was nothing that would make you want to listen to this. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, on the other hand, I've read other sermons that were one story after another, and you never figured out what the point was. But uh, so, so you get really, you know, you got to have both in that balance there. But at the same time, you know, we really do need to to, to be using it. Uh, one point this guy made it really bugged me was, you know, the role of the father. I don't know where he was going with that. Yeah, he he said, uh, you know. Um, it, it, which has to do with using, uh, you know, uh, a wireless phone and said, you know, the old figure, the head of the house, sitting grimly in the living room, reading the day's paper, with everyone who had to use the phone asking him for permission, speaking in soft tones when they answered a call or explaining who was that on the phone or history. Uh, the mobile phone has subverted de- uh, despotic domestic authority. You get the the idea that he grew up in Archie Bunker's house. He grew up in something. I mean, um, I mean, I don't, I don't remember my parents ever asking me who was that all the time. Uh, sometimes, they, I, I mean, and it was never like accusatory the way he makes it. Sometimes it was just you know something to talk about. You know, even today my daughter's on her cell phone. I said, "Oh, who are you talking to?" You know, or who are you talking to? You know, and, oh, it's it's this friend. Oh, tell her I said hi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I is. recognize my daughter's <laughs> ringtones for her friends. <laughs> I know who it is when it rings. <laughs> so, uh, oh, my daughter has one ringtone because I'm too cheap to buy her any others. Um, oh, our and, phones, you can just import them. So, actually, she just yeah, uh, she's got multiple ones on there, and she just you yeah. know picks different ones, but. Verizon disabled that on the phones. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, so one of the yeah, but but anyway, so you know, but you know, there was not a uh, but yeah, I just I just I question that idea. You know, I I I guess I've never been much of the, being the the man of the house, the, the the authority in the house. Anyway, I mean, I've always been more of a um, you know. Yeah, there's authority there, but it's servant uh, leadership. Not, yeah, servant leadership. That's always been with my kids, and uh, 
uh, have, you know, yeah, I have authority, but I never saw any reason to, you know, throw it out and say, you know, I'm in charge here. Um, so I just thought that was kind of a, I just say I always have authority, but I'm not a, a despotic domestic authority. <laughs> well, see, he's comparing this. He's talking about, you know, you, where you have a church and the pastor's in charge or, you know, or even like the archbishop or something like that. And he's saying, well, you know, the Internet is it's the Wild West, you know. You don't have it's 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 the ultimate democracy where you have the people, uh, you know, controlling things or whatever. And um, uh, yeah, well, that doesn't necessarily make it good. That's you have trollers and spammers and you know, and all that kind of stuff too. And for that yeah. matter, you know, the, the expression you know it's true because you heard it on the internet. <laughs> all right, you know, that's always said as sarcasm. Whereas if you heard it in the Bible, you really do know it's true. Yeah. Well, I often argue that, that it used to be that uh, evolutionists argued that if you give it, put an infinite amount of monkeys on an infinite amount of key, key, typewriters, eventually they type Shakespeare. I've often argued, well, now thanks to the Internet, we know that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put an infinite amount of idiots on an infinite amount of computers, and they just come up with more gibberish. Yeah. <laughs> So, ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But let's go for let's go from modern to ancient, and let's talk about this this tablet uh, that they found. I, you know, I don't know. I I, I heard of this, when I first heard about this, I was really excited. I went, I'm like, cool. This proves that the um the whole biblical prophecy the whole understanding that that the teaching of of Christ in the resurrection um was was there all along and you know that that it's that that's what the the remnant always believed and uh, yeah here it is here's the proof that the Christ is the fulfillment and then like i started reading seeing like the headlines in time and and newsweek and all that kind of stuff and uh and i see you know calls into question the resurrection you know like oh they just borrowed this idea that it was already around <laughs> no one, oh man you i guess you can spin this stuff any way you want <laughs> Right, because, I mean, you know, what I thought was interesting was that there was an expectation that the Messiah would rise from the dead. Uh, you know, once again, it goes back to the argument. Okay, let's let's assume for a moment that, you know, that because there's always the question of the authenticity of the, of, of the thing, and they're trying to figure that out and debate exactly what it does say, and so they're trying to figure all that out. But, you know, once again, if... The fact is, even if, you know, it, even if it says the Messiah will come, he will rise from the dead. If it didn't happen, it, all they had to do was go and prove and say, we don't care what the rock said. It didn't happen. Here's the body, buddy. Right. Yep. And the story. Yeah. Oh, we we should probably explain this one because <laughs> we're already talking about it. It was a three foot tall tablet with 87 lines of Hebrew um, that were written in ink. They weren't... Um, uh, inscribed in it. They were actually written in ink. And, uh, it says that it talks about a Messiah who will rise from the dead after three days. And, uh, now it's not in perfect condition. Some of it's faded, some of it's broken and, and stuff like that. But, you know, they can get enough out of what's actually there to get this, this text. So I, I saw this and I, I fully would expect them to find stuff like this. <laughs> you know, I've just seen but you, Jesus, you know, well, you rose from the dead, you copycat. <laughs> well, I want one of the guys, Mr. Da Daniel Borian, a professor of Talmudic culture at the University of California, said some Christians will find it shocking, a challenge to the uniqueness of their theology. Others will be comforted by the idea that of it being a traditional part of Judaism. Yeah. Exactly. You and I are on the latter half of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because be... this is what the people who really understood the scriptures were expecting. And now we have the proof, you know. This is the remnant that God had said there will always be a remnant. This is what the remnant believed. 
Right. Um, I mean, some people, you know, we, we, we get into some of this uh, stuff sometimes and people wonder, well, where in the Old Testament was there the prediction of the resurrection? The, the people were expecting it, you know. But Luke says that Jesus opened their minds to the scriptures and showed in there where he had to die and rise, made, rise again. So the idea that this was what the people were looking for and part of, of their expectation. You know, yeah, maybe not quite as fully as Jesus was there, and, and maybe they didn't quite understand everything about it. But you know, for some of them, that was an expectation that they had. Mm -hmm. So no, I I think this is really cool, and you know, this is one of those things we we see these different discoveries, and right. um, you know, and they point to the truth of Scripture. You know, this is what the people were waiting for. You know, Luke said it, and and. This is, we should not be surprised to find these kind of things. Um, at the same time, we don't base our faith on archaeology. You know, we've, there's, there's plenty of archaeological evidence to, um, to prove the historicity of what probably about 90, 95% of the events in the Bible. Um, but at the same time, every once in a while, something comes along that, where they discover something and it, it kind of shakes people up and go, Oh, Oh, well, maybe the Bible's not true. Cause this evidence seems contradicted. And of course, you know, over time it always works out, but you know, it, our faith is built on the word of God, not on the archeology, span but you know, it's the archeology span shows that this isn't just a bunch of made up myths. And you know, in, in this case, this is what the people believe. This is, you know, this wasn't, Christians didn't come up with a new religion. Christians, this was the fulfillment of what Judaism was supposed to be. A very nice brain. So, you can talk to a Messianic Jew sometime. They'll tell you all about it. I'm waiting! Fascinating stuff. But yeah, it is. Well, the other the other fun part, though, too, is again uh, trying to figure out some of these words that are illegible and whether or not they actually say what they think they say. And that's the other part of it too, is that that you know there is some debate here as to exactly what some of these things mean and stuff. Uh, so, uh, so uh, speaking of ancient teaching, let's go over to. Uh, this book, Buddha's Big Foot. <laughs> Got a new book uh, by a guy named Robert Korshinsky. I guess so. Um, and he presents uh, this. This is a, a press release. Okay, so <laughs> it's been written by the author, um, and so it's 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 going to be a little biased, and. It says that it presents the well-documented evidence that a Jewish man was not the first person to speak the words of Jesus. All of the New Testament books of the Bible, and there's, you know, quotes throughout this, um, as in like air quotes, uh, turns out to be sourced from the teachings of Buddha. Find a happy place! Find a happy place! Find a happy place! Yeah. I, I get the idea this is a self-published book uh -huh. because it's on sale at Amazon and CreateSpace, but not at Barnes & Noble or fine books sellers everywhere. I'm not crazy. Yeah. And he's putting out his own press releases. Yeah. You know, I this, this ties into that whole um, did... Are you know are all religions basically the same? And well, Buddhism is older than Christianity, but you know we just showed in that last story. No, it's not. Jesus coming along did not start a new religion. He fulfilled the the old religion, and, and you know, and and just continued it along the path that God had set out for it. And so here, you know, we come along with this guy, and you know, basically, not having read the book and not really interested in giving this guy money. But, you know, I've, I've heard these arguments before about, you know, Buddhism and the connections with Christianity and stuff. And 
Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, like the golden rule, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. You know, that was around before Jesus said it. When he said it, he was, you know, it was sort of like saying, you've heard this before, and yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, actually, though, the, the, one of the differences between Jesus and everybody else is everybody else put it in the negative. Don't do to other people what you don't want them doing to you. Jesus was the only one to put it in the positive. Um, and yeah, the, but to a certain extent, you, you can, you can make certain arguments because Buddhism is a religion of the law. Sure. Right. It's all about what you do. And Paul says that that law is written on the hearts of people. That by nature, you know, uh, when Gentiles by nature do the things uh, that are written in the law, even though they don't have the law, they show the laws written in their hearts. So we it's should part of the fully expect rep- similarities. Fully should, should expect similarities. I mean, we always believed in, you know, uh, that natural the natural revelation of God is indeed God. Uh, but the only way they have to get there is by law, not by any way, shape, or form of the gospel. Right. And there's no gospel in Buddhism. Mm-mm. There's no, you know, it, Buddhism is an offshoot of Hinduism. And it's, you know, it's it's very much, if you need to work, you need to uh, develop your um, sort of personality or whatever to reach enlightenment. And the onus is all on you. It's not mm-hmm. somebody else reached enlightenment on your behalf. Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. And someone gives you that enlightenment. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's the difference, you know, there's no cross, there's no empty tomb. There's no forgiveness. You know, and that's, that is, no matter what else you might want to talk about, the hidden roots of Christianity without the cross and the empty tomb. You know, there is no forgiveness. That's what it's all about. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, and he forgives us for Christ's sake. So, now... And the only people, by the way, within Buddhism who who really obtain salvation, the people who work it. I mean, you know, not not ever, you know, is is we we really talk about anyone who believes gets it. Right. Regardless. So, well, I guess we need to go down to Texas for everything else that we've got today. (laughs) Where should we deal first first at in Texas here? here? Well, we have heard so much about the fundamentalist uh, Latter-day Saints over the past several months. Uh, it's just amazing that, that one little sect, a uh, little cult, can, you know, become such a huge thing that um, this is, and it's, it's become so huge that the Mormons in Texas, the now are talking about the Salt Lake City based, the sort of what people mostly think about when they think about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and uh, and they're saying that now, uh, hold on a minute here, don't compare us with them. You know we don't have uh, polygamy anymore, and uh, you know we're we're really different from them. So you know please don't don't think that we're like them. Well, basically what they're doing is they're really objecting to the Bundy Mormons being called Mormon. They're arguing they're not really Mormon, you know, because we reject um, um, the idea of of polygamy. We reject uh, their idea of certain clothing you have to wear. We object to um, these other rules that they brought up. And other people are going, well, wait a minute. They believe in the Book of Mormon. That makes them Mormon. Whether you want to call them Mormon or not is another issue. But if you follow the Book of Mormon, uh, Doctrines and Covenants, you are, by definition, a Mormon. Right. And, you know, this is sort of like Lutherans and Catholics. I have no idea what that meant. I think we're going along thinking the same thing here. Um, You know, that whether or not there, there are Lutheran groups throughout the world that Dale and I, Dale and I would question whether or not you would actually consider them to be Lutheran or not. Yep. 
Um, but they claim an allegiance to the Book of Concord just as we do. Therefore, they're Lutheran. There are Catholic groups that you may question, you know, that certain Catholics may say these people aren't really Catholic, um, but um, in that they uphold the, you know, the doctrine, claim that the doctrines of the Catholic Church, they are. Right. Uh, even Judaism has the same argument. Orthodox Jew, Jew, Jews do not consider Reformed Jews to be truly Jewish, but they are. Yeah. So, you know, you can debate it or not, but when the world's looking at it, you know, they're going to categorize you. And, but, I mean, like Jim said, there's there's Lutherans out there that are, you know, based on their loose teachings, you know, you question whether they could really even be considered Christian. Um, not talking about any individual within the organization necessarily, but talking about the sort of official teachings or the, the latitude that's given where, you know, you've got this broad range that you don't have to be a Christian to say, yes, I'm in full agreement with this church. So, you know, it's, are they Mormons? Uh, yeah. But are they different? Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's sort of ignorant to just say, well, they're all the same. Any, you know, the same as saying all Baptists teach the same thing or all Lutherans or, or, you know, or anything else. Or all, you know, all Christians. By the way, Christian. you know what you get when you get four Baptists in a room? Uh, Five opinions. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Baptists there. <laughs> I think that's actually vodka he's drinking. Water. <laughs> anyway. Uh, no, this show would be a lot more interesting no. if it were. Oh, because you, um, well, of course, you know, you put four Lutherans together, there shall be a fifth. Anyway, so, um, a fifth of water, I'm not saying, but definitely a fifth. Uh, but, uh, I'm just really getting wacko over here. But anyway, yeah, the, there needs to be the understanding. I, and I think there is. I think that's why they called them fundamentalist Mormons. Mm -hmm. That these are not considered, you know, what you would consider mainline or mainstream Mormons. Yeah. But this is a different group, extremely fundamentalist, uh, holding. And it's interesting, really, because what they're doing is they're really arguing against, uh, the Mormon teaching of continuing revelation. Mm hmm. Yep, that's a good point. Uh, you know, that, that, you know, the reason that the, um, Mormons no longer practice uh, polygamy is because um, they had a later revelation which said no, nope, no more. And they're saying no, that that that's not a real revelation. And anything else that was followed then by the seer, prophet, and revelator is also equally not true. Right, because yeah, in in the Church of Jesus Christ, the, you know, the other thing that that I find ironic here is that they're arguing about using the word Mormon, but you talk to most Latter Day Saints, and uh, they don't like being called Mormons. <laughs> they'll they'll kind of go, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. But you know, they'd rather be called Latter Day Saints. But so now they're arguing about, oh, don't call them Mormons. Like, well, you don't want us to call you Mormons, so. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, but they believe the, the the mainline one believes that God changes His mind. <laughs> so you know, to that extent, I, I got to sort of just a little bit tip my hat to the fundamentalist ones and say, well, at least you stick with what you believe instead of changing to the you know when society changes. Uh, but I wonder if they still believe the bad spirits are encased in black bodies. Well, they weren't bad. They were neutral. Oh, is that what they were? They were yeah, neutral. That's right. Yeah, they, have neutral the, they, they were. They remain neutral in the uh, the war between exactly. God and Satan. And whatever was, you know, but you couldn't couldn't have any black black uh, bishops and stuff with an LDS, and then that that changed in seventy eight. Yeah, because God Isn't changed his mind. Title: Seal, Pro Seer, Prophet, and Revelator. 
Hmm. That would take. That's that's like, um, you know that that Monty Python skit where the guy walks into the office and the it's got the guy's name on the desk, and then the all of the different abbreviations sort of trail off the desk and around the corner and all the way around the room so that when the guy walks into the room, he actually has, there's a hinge on this guy's nameplate <laughs> that he has to open the hinge so that he can walk into the room because the guy has so many abbreviations after his name. <laughs> I've never seen that one. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's a few of them for you there. But now, okay, but what if you're possessed by a neutral spirit? <laughs> well, I am psychic, you know. You know, we've talked about exorcism. Can you get money for this? <laughs> well, you know, uh, when Jesus cast a demon out of a girl uh, in during his ministry, uh, he was they wanted to sue him. Uh, he didn't have any money, but uh, they were pretty mad because... I think you're thinking of Paul. Was it Paul? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Paul. <laughs> and Philippi. Yeah. Sorry. Now, yeah, you know, Christianity was, was was accused of ruining the economy. That was a, that was a... <laughs> like, wait a minute. We were using this uh, demon to predict the future. Now you just got rid of it. and <laughs> Now we can't play the ponies anymore. <laughs> But now you can sue. Uh, actually, actually, you can't. Um, this is down in the, the great state of Texas again. And uh, this, uh, uh, the, uh, wasn't, oh, uh, uh, the Pleasant Glade Assembly of God Church in Colleyville, Texas. And uh, one young woman there by the name of Laura Schubert, who was 17 and the pastor's daughter at the time. And I guess she must have been ticking Dad off somehow, because uh, he was convinced she had a demon. And so uh, they held her down, and they laid hands on her while she struggled to get free and attempted to uh, exorcise the devil out of her. And uh, she uh, originally was given three. She sued the church, and she originally was given three hundred thousand dollars. And then later it was reduced to $178,000. And the Texas Supreme Court in a 6-3 opinion said, this is a matter of church doctrine. We're not getting involved. And tossed the whole thing. Yeah. This is, um, I mean, I. it's kind of a tricky question. Because on the one hand, this is a matter of church doctrine, and, and for churches that are um, really focused on this whole demon possession thing, um, you know, this is an important thing. You can't tell them, no, you can't do that. On the other hand, this woman, you know, if you don't believe in that kind of thing, this woman is being held down against her will, and, you know, this is a, a pretty drastic kind of action. It's not like they just, you know, sprayed some holy water on her or something. So, I'm thinking that you could go with uh, not necessarily a civil case, but possibly a criminal case, um, and call it assault. Come and see the violence inherent in the system! And that would be a whole different can of worms that I think would be a lot more difficult. I, I, I mean, I think the court was probably right about this, that you know they don't really want to stick their nose in it. But I don't know. Now I, um, yeah, I mean, she said, you know, it happened twice, and uh, this is eleven years ago. So she's twenty-eight years old now, and uh, you know, and 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 they, uh, the church members held her down, laid hands on her while she cried, kicked, clenched her fist, and gritted her teeth and made guttural noises. And she said it left her deeply depressed and suicidal, needing psychiatric help. Okay, I could see where this would be upsetting. I can't see how where it would be, you know, emotionally scarring for the rest of your life, you know, mm -hmm. to that extent. Um, you know, uh, yeah, but she, um, for whatever reason, apparently it was with her. Uh, of course, I wasn't the poor person being held down and everything. Um, 
And she said, a, yeah, left, left her deeply depressed, suicidal, needing psychiatric help, and uh, she wound up dropping out of high school. Again, I got to wonder, you know, was this, was this the cause of her depression and uh, suicide, suicidal ideation? Or was this a precipitating event? You know, that there's some issues that she apparently was, you know, carrying along with her. You know, you have to ask the question, what caused the church to think she was possessed by a demon? Right. What right. about her behavior and stuff was causing concern? Yeah. I don't know. This is, you know, this is not only an issue of uh, the courts and churches. It is also an issue of the courts and parenting. Um, since it was her mm-hmm. dad. And, ah, boy, I don't know, that gets kind of messy. The whole thing. I am. Um, I have to give you, I thought it was interesting that the lawyer for the church had his, all of his legal fees paid by the insur- church's insurance company. I thought it was interesting that they were, I mean, I'm. my guess is they probably spent more money in legal fees fighting this the whole way than they would have paid out in the settlement. Mm-hmm. But I found it interesting that they they refused to settle and bought the thing the entire way. Well, but, you know, then again, it's a matter of, you know, some religious freedom here, too. Right. I think they I think I I mean, I'm glad that they took took the uh, road that there's a principle here and we're going to fight it no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Where it sets a precedent. You know, I'm sure somewhere along the line, if somebody had. Other insurance companies, he said, look, we'll settle for $75,000. We'll total up how much they, you know, pay out in legal fees and say, sold. Mm-hmm. You know, and, um, yeah, what, and, and stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of glad, uh, that they, uh, that they did that. It, it does get, you know, very difficult, I think. I mean, how, how do you go about, protecting parishioners at the same time on the other hand allowing a free exercise Mm -hmm. you're the diet coke of evil and how do you protect church and also then at what point do you you know how do you protect people from the um, oh I don't know what to call them the frauds out there sure sure well, you know, and and you've got issues like, uh, all right, my daughter is 12, and on, frequently on Sunday mornings, I give her wine in communion. You know, and there's, there's a lot of, of places where there's sort of exceptions made because it's part of religious practice. You know, and, and there's been questions about, like, the peyote religion. And, um, you know, use of drugs and, and there's, you know, there's all kinds of these things and it, it's not always a real clear cut, um, you know, not too worried about a, about an ounce or whatever of, um, or less, uh, practically a few drops in those little cups of wine, you know, but, um, you know, it just, it just raises that whole question of in what areas is the church exempt in what areas should the church be exempt? You know, because there's, there's also when you have these uh, faith healing groups, and uh, generally they're exempt if they from uh, neglect charges, although it, it seems to vary depending on the case, if they refuse medical help. Yeah, it, it you know, you know, it, it's very hard, a very difficult place, I think, to be in sometimes. But, uh, you know, in this case, you know, I, 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 I think that, I think the court probably ruled correctly. Uh, I think if they, you know, okay, maybe they held her down, but there wasn't apparently any, you know, um, physical assault. It wasn't like she was bruised or, or, you know, or hit or, or, you know, otherwise wounded in any way. Mm-hmm. But uh said on the other hand, he said no one should think this ruling would give protection to a church leader accused of abusing a child. There's right. no acu- accusation of abuse here. Right. And that probably would make things different. Mm-hmm. But hey, maybe you disagree. 
Yeah, what do you think about this? Yeah, well, I, I, you can give us your comments at podcast at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Uh, or you can, if Dale gets things going right, click on that beautiful picture of me sitting up there that, that I've got the big shot here. Uh, and it will take you directly to iTunes, and you can put a comment there that we'll get a hold of. Or you can put a comment, if you're watching this on um, YouTube or something like that, you can put your comments down there and, uh, you know, type it in, and we'll get a, we'll be told there's a comment here, and we'll come back to it. So uh, there's a variety of ways you can get a hold of us, and we love feedback. Feedback is, is great. You know, we do this for you folks. You know, I mean... Uh, it's it's getting late out here on the East Coast, but I want to do this because we do it for, you know, both of the fans that we've got out there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, keep sending us feedback. We really do appreciate Jim's it. Jim's kids. <laughs> um, well, my son in Iraq does, does, does listen to the audio, but my daughter is now in basic training, and so she's removed from all civilization and for another nine or ten weeks yet. Okay. Um, speaking of the video, um, you know, I was, I was thinking about this while we were working on setup. Is anybody out there watching this, um, like on some kind of high resolution? Are, you know, if you're watching the video, are you just watching it on your iPod or are you watching it like, are you using like, uh, some kind of a, like an Apple TV, Xbox 360? Uh, you know, are you watching it on a, on a TV? We're not going to be able to do this in HD because, our signal to begin with isn't, but right now we're doing it. It's, it's formatted for it's uh, 320 by 240. So it's formatted for like an iPod screen, an iPod classic screen. And we could format it, um, 640 by 480. It would be a bigger picture The you know, an iPod would shrink it down. Um, and it would work just fine that way. But my question is we could do a larger image. And now that I'm going to be editing, um, uh, we don't have such a huge file to send um, back and forth. But it does mean that the resulting file size would be a lot bigger. And so we would love to hear from people, would you like to see uh, uh, a, a bigger picture, a, a higher resolution um, image, uh, possibly a little bit clearer? <laughs> would you rather not? <laughs> it's like, oh, pixelation's good, you know. <laughs> um, so... You know, if you if you're watching this full screen, you know, and and you don't mind larger file sizes, or you know, if your internet speed's not real great, and uh, it would be a, a real problem for you to have, a, you know, a larger file size, uh, let us know because it would be, you know, fairly simple to to do larger ones. But if it's gonna be more of a hindrance than a help, then you know, we won't do it. Well, kids, that's enough for one night, eh? Okay. Any other comments? Nope, just a reminder to if you find some interesting religious news stories, post them up at crossfeednews.com and tell your friends. Take care, have a good week, everybody, and you should see us probably either later this week or very early next week. Yep. Take care, God bless. Good night, Bye-bye. everybody. God bless. Bye-bye.